Welcome back for Chapter 4 of School Out. Chapter 4 is called Wet Paint. I'm going to make a prediction. A prediction is just a guess, but I'm thinking about Marcus and Marius, and I know sometimes they can be naughty. Is there paint around? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Let's find out. Chapter 4, Wet Paint. One of the plans that Lucas' parents had for the summer was to get the outside of the house painted. When Lucas first heard about the project, he was very excited. He thought that he would be able to help. He liked the idea of climbing to the top of the tall ladder and applying fresh coat of white paint to the sides of the house. Don't be silly, Lucas, said his mother. This is a major undertaking. We have hired a professional painting company. There are a couple of men coming to do the job for us. Well, at least I can watch, said Lucas. You can watch, but keep away from the paint, said Mrs. Cott. She turned to face the twins as she spoke, so they would know she meant them, too. I don't want to find any paint on your clothes, she said. Remember, the paint is to go on the house and not on you. The painters were supposed to come the first Monday in July, but they were behind schedule. So it was the middle of the month when the van and the two painters finally arrived to paint the cot house. Lucas stood outside the house with Marcus and Marius and Genevieve. They all watched as the men set up their ladders. They put huge drop cloths on the ground around the house. It was like watching a TV show. The men didn't begin to paint at once. First, they climbed the ladders and scraped at bits of flaking paint. They removed all the shutters from the house. A man is breaking the house, said Marius. He seemed to be marveling that someone could do something that seemed naughty. He's not breaking the house, Genevieve explained. He must take down the shutters so he can paint underneath them. Your mother said that the shutters will be painted red. I like red, said Marcus nodding his head with approval. Remember to like it, but not touch it, said Mrs. Cott, coming out of the house. Don't forget what I said. I don't want any paint on your clothes. Keep your fingers out of the paint can. She turned to look at each of the twins. Do you understand, she said, not one single drop of paint on your hands. No paint on my hands, Marcus promised. No paint on my hands, said Marius. He looked down at the navy shorts and navy and red striped t-shirt he was wearing. No paint, he said again. After lunch, Lucas got on his bike and went to meet some of the boys at the local park where they were going to play ball. By the time he returned home, the painters had finished the actual job of painting. They worked with large rollers that they dipped into the cans of white paint. Genevieve had moved the plastic waiting pool from its usual place near the side of the house. Now it was located farther away from the house and from the painters. Marcus and Marius were just getting out of the water. Marius ran over to Lucas. Look at the house, he said, pointing to the newly painted section. Lucas nodded his head. Lucas, please watch your brothers for a minute. I forgot to bring towels, called Genevieve. She turned and went inside the house. Marcus came running over to Lucas, too. Look at all the paint, he said, pulling his big brother by the hand toward the nearest open can. Lucas looked into the can. The white paint had a shiny appearance inside the can, but it didn't have once it was applied to the sides of the house. It looked cool and inviting, like a vat of milk, or even better, melted marshmallows. Paint looks good, said Marcus. Lucas grinned at his brother. Yep, he agreed, nodding his head. It looked good to him, too. Marcus stood right next to the paint pail. Lucas knew he should pull him away from it, but he didn't. It wasn't his job. Genevieve had come all the way from France to watch the twins. It was her job to see that they didn't go near the paint. Lucas wondered if his brother would dare to put his hand in the pail. He stood watching to see what Marcus would do. Marcus didn't put his hand in the pail. He lifted his foot and stuck it right inside the can. Marcus, shouted Lucas. It was hard to believe his brother had really done that. He grabbed the little boy and the white paint dripped off his foot and onto the lawn. Me too, screamed Marius, and he ran toward the can of paint. No, no, shouted Lucas. He dropped Marcus on the grass and ran to get Marius. He knew his mother was going to be furious, but he couldn't help laughing. Marcus had what looked like a white sock on his foot. All around, the grass was marked with bits of white paint, too. At least he had prevented Marius from getting a matching sock on his foot. Lucas, what did you do? exclaimed Genevieve as she emerged from the house, carrying a couple of towels. Me? said Lucas. I didn't do anything. He did it, not me. I told you to watch them for one minute, and look what happened, Genevieve said. She approached Marcus cautiously. She didn't want to get that paint on her. Marius was squirming in Lucas' grass. Lucas put his brother down on the ground. It's not my fault, Lucas protested, although he knew very well. He could have prevented Marcus' action. 
Yes, it is, said Genevieve. You know these boys. One can never take one's eyes off them, not for a second. Your mother will be furious with me. But it's not my fault, it's your fault. It wouldn't have, would have happened if I hadn't been here. Louis, Lucas asserted he remembered. There he is with his foot in the bucket of paint. He remembered how tempting the white paint had looked to him. No wonder Marcus had not been able to resist the urge to stick his foot inside. One of the painters climbed down the ladder. Hey, kid, he shouted. Lucas and Genevieve looked at the painter, and their eyes went to the spot where the painter was pointing. There was Marius standing with not one, but two feet inside the can of paint. Cold, said Marius when he saw everyone looking at him. Cold paint. Wet, shouted Genevieve. That's wet paint. Cold and wet, said Marius, nodding his head. If you leave the paint on, you'll know which one it is, suggested Lucas. He started laughing again. Marius has two white socks. Marcus has one. He thought it was a great joke. Probably Julia would appreciate it, too. Genevieve did not think it was funny. I am surprised at you, Lucas Cox, she said in an angry voice. Lucas couldn't understand why all her anger was directed at him and not at the twins. However, as he watched her removing the paint, he started thinking. He remembered how he had insisted to his mother that he was able to take care of Marcus and Marius, that he didn't need any outside help from an au pair girl. This afternoon, though, he hadn't helped with the twins at all. He'd let them get paint on themselves when he could have prevented it. It took a whole hour for Genevieve to remove the white socks from the feet and ankles of both twins. When Mrs. Cott returned home from shopping, there were still some traces of paint remaining on the boys. I am so sorry, said Genevieve. Lucas was relieved that she didn't mention that he had been watching the twins when they got paint on them. Didn't I tell you not to get any paint on you, Mrs. Cott? asked Marcus and Marius. No paint on my clothes, said Marius proudly. Marcus waved his finger friend his mother. No paint on my hands, he said. Mrs. Cott nodded her head slowly. I guess it's my fault, she said. I shouldn't, I never told them not to put their feet into the paint can. But Lucas knew it was his fault, too. That's the end of chapter four. Right? Can you think about a time when maybe you or brother or sister did something that they knew they shouldn't do? Stay tuned tomorrow for chapter five.